Hello everybody, and welcome to a Haunted Sponge video. No, it's not Hunt a Killer, but it is little puzzle boxes. Uh, when I sat down in here today, I was originally going to crack into this, Season 2, Episode 5 of Hunt a Killer, to film uh, an unboxing video. And I'll do that, I'll do that next. Um, because I need to get a live stream going to this, because that season is almost done. But I remembered uh, that I've been wanting to crack into these boxes for the past few days. I just got back from a trip to London uh, with my wife. We went on a little vacation. And as part of our vacation, we went to the Sherlock Holmes Museum. Uh, so if you check this out, that's my wife and I at the Baker Street Underground Station, uh, being very touristy, taking pictures. Uh, but they're, honestly, they really play up the Sherlock Holmes angle themselves. Uh, in a lot of underground stations in London, they have these sort of like mini stories, these little pieces of artwork on the sides of the station, uh, which I thought was awesome. Somebody obviously graffitied it. Someone scratched the name Alex into it. But I love that. I love that you, basically anywhere that you go around Baker Street, everything is Sherlock Holmes. And there are like there are like laundromats that – say that they are Sherlock Holmes. There was like a Peruvian restaurant that claimed to be the real 221B Baker Street where Sherlock Holmes lived, which is not true, but whatever. So we went into the Sherlock Holmes Museum, which is at the address that he's said to have lived at. Mind you, it's a fictional character, um, but they never, no one at the museum themselves ever brings up Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the man who wrote the Sherlock Holmes stories, who invented the character. They pretend that Sherlock Holmes really lived here, and as such, here is his living room. This is where Sherlock Holmes and Watson sat down together to solve their mysteries. It's very close. It must have been knocking knees a little bit. Uh, is that a phrase? Is that? That might mean something else. But so uh, you can see that Sherlock Holmes' deerstalker cap on the table and a pipe and a magnifying glass and Watson's bowler hat. If you look real close in the mirror, that's old Willie Rogers himself taking the picture. You can see Sherlock Holmes' violin, a bunch of vials of stuff over on the right. Love it. Uh, here is Sherlock Holmes' tool set under glass. And then when you start going upstairs, it starts getting a lot weirder. Uh, they have a bunch of mannequins in there. Madame Tussauds is right down the road. And I guess Sherlock Holmes is in competition with them because there are a ton of mannequins in there. I don't know who this is. I, everything in there is a reference to one of the stories. I have not read all of the stories, so I, I don't know. Uh, but some of them are creepy looking like this. Some of them, however, are just awesome. This is the Hound of the Baskervilles hanging on the wall. Uh, one of the things I love about it especially is that you can see the fur on it is like falling off because it's super old and it's been there forever. So it's not super well taken care of. Um, but it was super fun. It was crazy to walk around in this house that's made to look like a fictional person lived there. Uh, and like I said, right next door, there is a Sherlock Holmes gift shop, uh, that where I just could not hold back. I'm a huge fan of mysteries. Obviously, if you've watched any of my hunt a killer videos, if you've watched, uh, or listened to any of my podcasts, you know that I'm into horror and mysteries and everything. I just could not stop myself from buying a ton of things in there. Uh, I got it really from my dad, who was a gigantic Sherlock Holmes fan. Uh, and his office growing up was always filled with like a Sherlock Holmes chess set, Sherlock Holmes everything. We had Sherlock Holmes stuff hanging on the wall. It was unavoidable. And so I'm happy to kind of continue that tradition myself. I bought myself a few things and a few things for my family and friends. Got this pipe. So I'm going to set these things aside because what I really want to focus on are these little puzzle boxes. I got these little, what they call them are matchbox puzzles. They had a bunch of them for sale. I got a few. I got like four of them. So I'm going to do this one first. Yin and Yang. Yin and Yang. Matchbox puzzle. Yeah. I'm going to try not to take my hands off. Can you separate the two pieces and reattach them again? I think I had one of these growing up, actually. Maybe this will be easier than I thought it might be. It's not the most involved thing in the world, huh? I do not know how much it was in U.S. dollars. I think it was like five bucks. So you have the two linked rings. Let's see. I don't want to force it. I feel like I could easily force it with my masculine strength. <laughs> 
I swear. I feel like it's the kind of thing that once you know the trick, you can't, you can't unlearn it. Well, apparently you can, because I think I had this as, as a kid, and I think I learned the trick, and I definitely don't know what I'm doing now. <laughs> Stupid. Can Willie find his way out of a paper bag? Tune in and find out. I feel like I'm doing the equivalent of just going like, how are they not unlinked? I feel, I feel stupid. <laughs> okay, let's take a break from this for a minute. I swear I'll come back to it, I promise. But I want to crack open the other one, mostly because I'm a child and I, uh, I have impulse control problems. I need to at least see what's inside it. So why don't we set down the yin and yang uh, uh, trick for just a moment and at least take a look at this tea time puzzle. Maybe this will be easier and we can come back to the yin and yang and completely destroy it. Can you arrange the four wooden pieces into a T shape? I bet I can. But no, there wouldn't be any 45 degree angles in a T. Oh, that almost flattens out, right? How else can we get up? Because we need we need multiple. We need three. That fits perfectly. There's no 45 degree angles in the T. And back to yin and yang. Well, I have just brute forced it, which is exactly what I said I would not do. Okay, I have now separated them, which is not at all the intended way to do it. Uh, the, the gap in here is not wide enough to fit a thing. <gasps> do you see what I have done? It goes here with a little twist of the wrist. Willie figured it out. You didn't expect that, did ya, Mr. Holmes? Uh, okay, now back to the Teton puzzle, the only one that I have not solved. That's that's super close. That's the closest that I've gotten at all. But I don't like it. All right, I'm going to ProfessorPuzzle.com. What's the worst that can happen? Damn it, they completely gave it away. They gave it away. I just wanted to know if this shape was right, and they just show you the solution. Professor Puzzle has, has no respect for their gamers, and, uh, well, I'm heartbroken. Uh, but that is how you make a tea out of the tea time puzzle. At least I uh, cracked the case of the the wiggly thing. Remember when I cracked that? Anyway, you know that I know how to do it now. I don't need to prove myself to you. Um, okay, I'm gonna go uh, film a unboxing for the next episode of Hunt a Killer. I'm on season two, episode five, the penultimate episode of season two. Uh, but those of you out there who may be watching this might also be interested in some of the other projects that I do. Just uh, yesterday, I launched a brand new podcast called Guide to the Unknown with my sister Kristen, where we talk about horror, mysteries. We Every week, every Friday, we're just going to bring another monster to the table and tell each other about it. And uh, so why don't you guys check out this clip? I'm talking about the monster, the Willow Wisp, uh, which is literally a little, a little speck of light that people would see walking uh, in the middle of nowhere. This is like a couple hundred years ago. They would see a, a speck of light off in the distance, try to find it, and eventually a lot of them got lost and drowned in swamps and bogs and stuff. So here I am telling a little bit of the origin of the term Will-O-Wisp. This is from Guide to the Unknown, Episode 3. It's available on Apple Podcasts. I've got it on YouTube.com slash TalkBomb. Anywhere that podcasts are, you can find this. So check this out, and I'll see you on the other side. Interestingly enough, the name Willow the Wisp mm -hmm. has a strange uh, 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 etymology. Do tell. A wisp, mm -hmm. Kristen, is a bundle of sticks or paper sometimes used <laughs> as a torch. That's not what I was expecting at all. Why? I don't know. I thought I thought it was going to be like wisps of air, yeah, it's like, like a wisp wind. thing. Well, it yeah, is a torch yeah. essentially. Yeah. A wisp is. Yeah. A torch. Yeah. Well, I thought it was going to be like uh, not matter. Yeah, wisps. I think of, of being <laughs> right. like almost like the the smoke that is above yes. a match. Yeah. Like that's wispy smoke. Yes. But no. Or like those little portable toothbrushes. You know, wisps. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Or uh, no, it's a torch. Mm -hmm. And will o the wisp is literally referring to sort of like the goal. Yeah. The the motivation mm -hmm. of the torch. Will of the torch. 
Cool. Mm-hmm. Where did this start? Do you happen to know? I'm just curious. Uh, this this version of it, uh-huh. I believe, is is sort of like a, a European uh-huh. concept, sort of like Irish, Scottish, uh-huh. British. That's uh-huh. this. There are just like when we did the book, Man, Irish. Yeah. There are a million other yeah. like concepts of Will o' the Wisp. I'll tell you uh-huh. some. Uh-huh. I've picked out the ones that I find are actually yeah. interesting or have like some bizarre uh, you know quirk about them. Yeah. But uh, what I thought was particularly interesting about this is that <clears throat> the term Jack o' Lantern uh-huh. has a very similar meaning, which uh-huh. is Jack. Of lantern, yeah, mm-hmm. and as part of Willow Wisp, they just start talking about jack o' lanterns left, right, and center. Really? Yeah, which I was surprised about. We talked about jack o' lanterns back in the Boogeyman episode as well. What did we say about them? I don't remember. Uh, that one of the Boogeyman concepts was uh, uh, actually a thing called a coco. Oh yeah, 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 which yeah. It was, was like a coconut head or a something. Demon, yeah, yeah. is the reason we have the word coconut. Yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> it's insane. But it also refers to any gourd with a carved face or something. Of course. I I definitely didn't already forget. Yeah. Uh, the names Willow the Wisp and Jack O' Lantern are explained in folk tales recorded in many many variant forms in Ireland, Scotland, England, Wales, Appalachia, and Newfoundland. Hmm. In these tales, mm-hmm. protagonists named either Jack or Will. Okay. Very specific. Yeah. Are doomed to haunt the marshes with a light for to some... To haunt the pumpkins <laughs> with a light inside them. Sitting <laughs> and enjoying the glow. season. Yeah. <laughs> doomed to haunt the marshes with a light for some misdeed. This is sweet. One version from Shropshire... <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> ...is recounted by K.M. Briggs. Uh-huh. In her book, A Dictionary of Fairies, and refers to Will the Smith. Yes. Will the Smith? Yes. The Fresh Prince himself. Yeah. Will is a that wicked... That ties in a little bit to mine in an interesting way. Really? Yeah. Weird. Will the Smith. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, Will is a wicked blacksmith who is given a second chance by St. Peter at the gates of heaven, but leads such a bad life that he ends up being doomed to wander the earth. The devil provides him with a single burning coal with which to warm himself, which he then uses to lure foolish travelers into marshes. So he just wants to kill them? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You can't go to heaven. I love Will of the Wisp. Yeah. How about that? Guide to the Unknown. Brand new horror podcast from Talk Bomb, my little production company that I run with my friends. Uh, it's available now. It's a video show on YouTube.com slash Talk Bomb. Just look up Talk Bomb in the YouTube app. And it's everywhere podcasts are. It's just an audio show. You can listen to it. You can watch it. You can do whatever you want. Five episodes are available right now. We launched yesterday. Uh, Very excited about it. If you like it, let me know what you think about it. Subscribe, review, share it with people. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, But I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at a couple of weird matchbox puzzles from the Sherlock Holmes Museum. Um, I solved one of the two, which is a 50%. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. All right, you guys, I got to go. I got hunter killer things to do. I got to jump back in the story of John William James. I will see you uh, very soon. Keep your eyes peeled for when I'm going to be posting my announcement of when I'm going to do the live stream uh, theory video. Spoiler alert, it's Monday night. This Monday night at 8 p.m. I'm going to do it. Uh, but so I'll see you over there. And uh, until then, stay tuned to talkbomb.com. Uh, follow Haunted Sponge, whatever. And I'll see you guys in another place, another time. Until then. Adios. The crime's no longer afoot. Is that a good sign-off? Goodbye. Goodbye.